It's an open heaven. An open heaven was created the day that Jesus was baptized in water. It was prophesied about way back in Genesis 28 that there would be a people that would be the abiding place of God, a house of God on the planet. And as such, they would attract the angelic realm to come and go. A gate. That's you. Living conscious of that does something to the way you think. See, you'll always broker the nature of the world you're most aware of. Being aware of what God has already given and intended for us. He didn't send us into an impossible assignment without backing. He said, disciple nations. He sent us into an impossible task because he had already set the stage for success in that impossible task. We've got these statements. I read another one for you this morning out of Psalms 145, that one generation shall praise your works to another. There will be a time where a generation praises the works of God to another. A generation. God will capture the heart of a generation. Think about it. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's God's intention, that every person on the planet has divine encounter. These are the intentions of the Lord, that all shall know me, Isaiah, or excuse me, Jeremiah. Also, these, the, these, uh, these verses are there to capture the heart of a people that could say, you know what, I'm going to live under the awareness of an open heaven. See, Jesus comes along. He's the house of God. He goes, Tag, you're, it. you're the house of God. He comes, reveal, he says, I'm the light of the world. Then he says, before he leaves, he says, you're the light of the world. He passes the baton to a people saying, here, my assignment is now yours. As the Father sent me, I send you. He lived with an awareness of unlimited supply because he was aware of a world that has no end, no restriction. No end. Drawing from that world is what enabled him to, to match any encounter that he had, to match it with, with an answer and a solution. I, I believe, here's the deal. Old Testament, angels ascending, descending. Jesus comes along, he models it. He passes the baton to you and me, and there's this description of angelic activity in the life of anyone who lived a life of risk, pleasing God. Then Paul captures words for it, and he says, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. Where do Christians go when they die? You're dead to sin, guess what? It's not, just, it's not just an imaginary position that you have with the Lord. You have the right to an encounter to see from heaven's perspective because it is open over you. It is open over you. You know, it's, it's a fun story, a funny story, but years ago one of our students had an encounter with the Lord that was really quite bizarre. In heaven, she actually saw this room with spare body parts. You say, well, that doesn't exist in heaven. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. But she did. And she was with Chris ministering down in Santa Rosa, I think it was. And a gal came up that was in a head-on collision, had really messed up her legs, used to be a dancer and had a very little function. And she's talking to this gal who had just seen this heavenly room encounter, which I've talked now to probably four or five people, six people maybe, that have seen the same thing. And since then, we've been seeing creative miracles. So this gal comes up to her and she's talking about her accident and she needs a miracle. And she says, I don't even have a kneecap. Well, the gal who's seen the, heaven, the spare parts room in heaven, she says, well, I'll get one for you. <laughs> That's like... That's got to be like the ultimate response ever. <laughs> well, I'll get one for you. She reaches her arm like this. She brings it down, lays hands on the knees. Within 15 minutes, she has a new kneecap. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> but I like it so much. See, what Jesus did for you and for me was to clear the way so that we are without excuse. We have access, not through travail, not through much labor. We have free access.
to him and to his world at every moment of every day because we live as a gate to release that reality into this world. It happens through decree, through touch, laying out of hands, acts of faith, prophetic acts. We release that world into this one. And the more we become aware of the open heaven over us, I believe the more consistently we're capable, able, of releasing the dominion of the Lord into the earth. It's my personal conviction. You know the Bible says the glory of the Lord will fill the earth as the water covers the sea. I do not believe it will be a military invasion. I do believe it will be in response to the delegated authority, the people of God that have obeyed the Lord and have watched as the Lord has been released through the hearts and minds, the lives of people who have just walked in humble obedience to the Lord until this city, this nation, this planet is filled with his glory.